Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. Welcome to <clears throat> Knuckleheads of Liberty Podcast, formerly uh, Libertarian Counterpoint Podcast. We're coming at you on Christmas Eve, uh, December 24th of 2020. <clears throat> and uh, with me here today, uh, we have in the upper left-hand corner, Leon, the word Brathwaite, last word in Liberty, is a retired engineer from the state of California. And up in our right-hand corner, we have our Screaming Eagle of Freedom, Tim Ebert, pilot in the state of California. And uh, I'll be your host today. My name is Jason McPhee. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, Christmas, I guess, couldn't come too early. Uh, seems to have brought us the uh, <laughs> vaccine, stimulus, and all kinds of stuff. And so we'll be talking about those items on the show today. <laughs> so let's uh, jump right into it. So uh, stimulus checks. Well, uh, it seemed like uh, we had our... COVID and stimulus uh, relief package by Congress was all voted on, all the pork was loaded in, and we thought we were going to have this all uh, coming down the pike. Uh, I guess it would have been approved uh, today or yesterday. But yes, yesterday, it was Trump, supposed to be signed yesterday. Yes, but Trump put the brakes on it. So the Republicans were sort of uh, starting to crow about how they had sort of brought the Democrats down in some of their demands about, you know, how much money they wanted. Uh, but uh, at the last minute, Trump uh, jumped in and said, hey, you're not giving enough stimulus money to people <laughs> for COVID relief. And I think he criticized some of the money going to other countries and some of the other uh, budget bills that were also passed as well. But um, but he wanted two thousand dollars in stimulus relief to uh, for COVID relief instead of the six hundred that was passed, and the Democrats are all too gleeful to uh, go along with that, I guess. But now <laughs> I'm not quite sure what's uh, what's going to happen. What do you guys think about this? It seems like kind of a you know uh, yet yet more turmoil as uh, Trump leaves <laughs> on his way out the door. <laughs> I I, I think I think it's kind of ridiculous to have these the, these government types shutting down the economy, ruining people's lives, and then they're gonna send us a six a six hundred dollar check or a thousand dollar check or fifteen hundred dollars or whatever the hell it is they're gonna send us. They ruin the economy and then they're gonna stimulate the economy by trying to pay us what welfare. I guess essentially is what what they're saying. They're calling they're calling it stimulus, but it's a, it's a transfer payment. That's what it really is. It's really kind of ridiculous. But it all goes back to this thing of government deciding what is essential and what is not. Why we have people at home? Why pe why is the economy being locked down right now? There's very little science to support a lock the lockdown of the economy, and nobody's looking at the, the 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 negative effects anyway. But this thing about oh they're going to stimulate the economy after they are locked it down. This is ridiculous. The government should not be making choices like this. Not at all. Well, there's some people that are that are looking at it. In fact, there's 22 separate uh, studies that have been uh, published, uh, peer-reviewed scientific studies. Each one of them indicate that shutting down uh, the economy is does not help uh, reduce the uh, spread of a virus like COVID. So, so they're all in agreement. And then you can you can look at the you can compare the graphs of COVID. Uh, uh, whichever you you want, deaths or the uh, the infection rate of of uh, states in the United States that have shut down totally, like California, and states that have opened up or stayed open, <clears throat> they look the same. The graphs look exactly exactly the same, uh, or in some cases, like California's, <laughs> we're one of the worst, right. uh, uh, and uh, and yet we've shut down. So you know, I I don't know what greater proof is uh, it's 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 like it's like this whole stimulus package thing um stimulus with a uh, hundred percent debt brand new money printed up at the fed they're borrowing it from the fed and they the fed just prints it up no problem or they're going to no, no matter what it is and uh, i understand my understanding is that yeah the the democrats are all uh too uh, gleeful about adding instead of 600 bucks a person, 2000, but not getting rid of, uh, you know, the, 
the billions to um, Egypt for their military. E Egypt. Yes. You know, we can't we can't uh, bow to those um, those countries, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, fast enough, hard enough, long enough. Uh, you know, they're the ones and they're the ones that sent Egypt sent one and uh, the rest came from Saudi Arabia that uh, that ran uh, airliners into the uh, the the Twin Towers, uh, the, the, you know. These are our enemies, and yet because we have this whatever relationship it is, they uh, get the brunt of our foreign aid. It's pathetic, and so this this whole thing, the the printing up of money and giving it away to countries like Vietnam, the, the, who have zero COVID deaths, and putting it into something called a COVID package, just typical of government. I mean. I, I don't know what it's like. I'm lashed to the bow of the Titanic and and gagged, and I'm sitting there watching us go closer and closer to the iceberg, and there's nothing I can do about it because no, you know, it, what difference does it make? Uh, we've been warning about you know just pumping this bubble of debt up, 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 and and waiting for it to burst and and they have no issue with continue the continuing of of uh increased air pressure into the <coughs> into the bubble they don't care and, and there's nothing we can do about it so yeah. as libertarians as a libertarian at least coming from me this is this is my view i'm lashed to the titanic and watching the iceberg approaching and i'm you know, there's nothing I can do except just sit there and watch it all unfold in front of me. But what is what is happening here? And Timmy, you're right. What is happening here is that is that is that old axiom that whenever the government grow, grow larger, our our individual liberties grow smaller, and that is what is happening. You know, the mm -hmm. the government is taking power away from us centralizing that power and then they deciding they are deciding what goodies they're going to hand out or they're going to give us a little stimulus check they're going to give us a little bit of this and a little bit of that and we should bow down and say yes thank you master that is what we uh, should be doing yeah they broke this, our legs yes yeah, exactly they, yes they broke our legs very good analogy they broke our legs and then they're going to tell us well let me help you up we're going to yes. help you up Here's a pair of government. Whenever the government wants to help you, this is the time you should be running and running far away. And this is what is going on right now. Our individual liberties are being destroyed. Just like Tim says, I guess, the Titanic, the Titan, the Titanic is approaching that iceberg, that big giant iceberg right there in, in the middle of the ocean. And nobody seemed to know how to steer it away from the iceberg, even though the iceberg is very, very visible. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so so the end of that that break your legs analogy is, and then here's a pair of crutches. Aren't we great? You know, the government right, gives exactly. you a pair of, of crutches. Yes. yes. You know what wonderful uh, what a wonderful boy I am for giving you those cr <laughs> crutches. Yeah, probably probably defective in the wrong size to boot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're probably. They're, and, and they will give you they'll give you the crutches but the crutches they'll be of different of different heights you know yeah. one, one will be five feet and the other will be four yeah <laughs> exactly well, well you know there the, you are. The, the only person who seems to have any sense in all of this is is uh senator Rand paul the other day he was uh uh, speaking on the floor of the Senate, and yes. you know, he gave a, a nice, I don't know, 10, 15 minute speech, pretty much saying what should be obvious to anybody that, look, you know, we're, we're just writing, we can't write checks, we can't write our way out of this. I mean, we, yes. we're cutting down our productivity, and we're just right, we're printing out more funny money. You know, the, the bottom line is, is that, you know, we, we've got to get people back to work you know yeah. that's the real solution yeah. that is not that's the only yeah. that is the only real stimulus we need is people going back to work <clears throat> and, what, yeah. and, and what is more disgusting about it is that all the big businesses can stay open but all the small mom and pop shops are being closed and the restaurants this is ridiculous yeah 
Well, you know, one of the things that uh, worries me a little bit about this, though, is that, you know, the Republicans had this, you know, bill that they thought was uh, essentially a done deal. And the Democrats were sort of going along with it, even though they wouldn't do it before the election. <laughs> so just to, just to spite Trump. But, you know, and they were holding out for more money, essentially. And, and now, uh, after Republicans started sort of doing a victory lap on this, uh, you know, I, I, my understanding is even one of the senators running in uh, Georgia, you know, was putting out a, a, a campaign ad saying how, you know, they had, you know, brought relief to the, you know, citizens of Georgia. And then yes, here comes yes. Trump saying, yeah, this is terrible, Bill, and I'm not going to sign it. And it needs to have more money. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm hoping that he doesn't, you know, with, with his antics, just derail, you know, the Republicans chances in Georgia, because you know, as a libertarian, I mean, our, our, our best bet is that, you know, the, just that the gears get, you know, sort of gummed up, you know, and yes, <laughs> gridlock. Yes. Yeah. Gridlock, yeah. Oh, gridlock, is a, right. grid, gridlock is a very good thing, quite frankly. Okay. Yeah. We don't need any more expansion of the government. We really don't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and you know, I mean, if I had to take my pick of which one would be more fiscally responsible if they had everything, probably the Republicans. But the the thing is that, good God, if he, either one of them, you know, gets complete control of the ship, especially the left. I mean, oh my gosh, yeah. I don't think, you know, with their ideas on modern monetary uh, theory, they they seem to think that it doesn't matter how much money you print, you just it's it's all okay until you get to full employment i think is what they say i i, I don't quite understand their rationale but uh you know essentially the the way they think is that you can just print endlessly and it's okay yeah, <laughs> so. yeah. you know but this was Rand paul Rand paul was making a very good point on on on, on, the, on the floor because he was talking about how you know over the years republicans have had this very big mantra of of you know, containing spending, cutting spending and all that kind of stuff and things mm -hmm. like that. But when you look at what is being done now, I mean, Republicans can't make that claim anymore. The way, they, the way they're, they're, they're pumping these fake dollars into the economy under the guise of stimulus, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's ridiculous. So the Republicans have lost all moral authority on the, on, on the spending issue if you want it through. But if, like you say, when we have to choose the lesser of two evils in, 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 in this matter, you really would like to have some gridlock, so that means you would like the Republicans to keep control of the sen of the Senate. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope it does, it turns out that way. But because we need gridlock, we don't need these people uh, set loose on, on the Treasury. We really don't. Yeah. Well, you know, as as, as far as uh, some of this goes, too, you know, the it's, the money that they're. I think it's two trillion that uh, this whole uh, that all the but uh, the bills that they had just signed or that they were trying to pass through Congress the other day. Two point four. Two point four. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's a, it's a huge amount when you consider how much we're already in debt. Um, you know, I uh, we, in recent shows we've talked about the you know debt to GDP ratio, and it's just staggering. I mean, we're getting to levels that we haven't been close to since World War II, right. and I mean we're right. kind of shooting past that. I think uh, you know with our lowered productivity during all this, but. Um, now, uh, you know, aside from all this money that they were recently going to pass, you know, the states are starting to say that they're going to need a lot of bailout money in the future. And I, I guess they're looking like, you know, Joe Biden in 2020, they're hoping he'll be their Santa Claus for that year. <laughs> and that, you know, especially these these big blue states, I, I think the Governor's Association, you know, which is, I guess, not not quite partisan or sort of bipartisan. They're, they're suggesting that, you know, states and cities are going to need like around 500 billion over the next couple of years to sort of shore up their, their budgets. But to me, that seems, you know, optimistic yeah, <laughs> with all the damage that's being done. <laughs> and, but, but, they, you know, the, the, one of the crazy things though, is, and I, I side with the Republicans a little bit on this is they don't want to see, you know, states that have just mismanaged their finances going into all this, like California, like and Hawaii, especially yes, being, right. yeah, is super aggressive in their, uh, you know, lockdowns as well, uh, getting rewarded, I guess, at the expense of everybody else by being able to. So anyway, I don't know. You guys have any thoughts on all that? You know, I could, I could be persuaded to to bail out the states, but with a big but, if. 
there's no accountability with the bailout. If there's nothing that's going to change with the bailout, then I'm totally against any form of bailout for any state, including California. One of the big problems with, the, with these with it, um, with this mis mismanagement is the unfunded liabilities from pensions. Now, my pension is my retirement and pension is tied up in in, in some of this mess. Okay, so I, I might be talking against my own interests here, but I don't want bailout to these states, and then they're gonna turn around and do the same thing that they've been doing for the last fifty years. What yeah. is the point of it? Because we just bail them out now, and then it, it becomes a band aid for the, for 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 another another gush of wonderful utopia that they're going to try to try to bring upon them bring upon us so no yeah. so no bailout without accountability unless they're going to change something and change something uh, um, drastically no we don't no bailout yeah i don't think there will ever ever be any kind of an accountability and there certainly won't be anybody paying it back uh right. you know um it will if if they did that if they if they do that where uh, states now will be funded essentially by the central bank. Okay, let's just forget <laughs> about all the the stuff. It's it's going to be all a hundred percent, just like all this, all these numbers, the two point four and the five hundred billion, which is half a trillion. Uh, all this money they're they're throwing around will all of it, every dime of it, will be brand new printed money from the central bank. 100 percent it's not going to come from some taxpayer uh that's alive it's going to be coming maybe from taxpayers in the far distant future or yes. it may be coming from people that uh suffer from an explosion of inflation rates that would um make uh weimar germany look pale in comparison so um <clears throat> you know which is what well, the modern monetary theorists uh, seem to forget and uh, people that complain about this all being socialism, they all forget that there's a central bank involved in this. And the central bank is the, the uh, entity that is allowing this kind of thing. So it would destroy our federalist system <clears throat> of separation where you have independent state, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> independent states that are independently functioning and funding themselves all of a sudden would just be centrally funded by the federal by the central bank and the federal government through the federal government the central bank through the federal government and that would be the end of federalism a hundred percent and uh you know a federal government could simply twist arms and have them do whatever they wanted them to do sure. or, yes. and so on so just forget about it. I mean, just forget about the United States being the United States. It's it's going to be um, uh, it's going to be just one giant country, and you know, and they're getting these ideas from from separate countries like Germany and and uh, the United Kingdom and and other European countries who have extra uh, uh, increased their debt <clears throat> burdens. Uh, as a percent of GDP, for example, Germany uh, used to be 60% in that neighborhood of GDP, uh, their debt, their debt. And I'm just talking their debt. And now it's projected. They don't know yet because it hasn't finished the year of 2020, but it's going to be well over 80%. Who knows what the eventual figure will be? Well, that's a huge increase. That's a 30% increase in in debt to GDP, I mean, and we're, we're not talking nominal debt, we're talking debt as a percent of GDP. So, so um, uh, these, uh, these uh, oh, oh and, and this is to pay their people to stay home and, and look at the wall and, uh, and be uh, good little COVID um, um, peons and, yeah minions and just just sit there and don't work because we're gonna we're gonna print some money up and we're gonna give it to you and there you have it and so and, and uh they're they're starting off much better than most of the european countries i know we're getting up on time but anyway the the uh the, the end result of all this if i guess 
maybe the modern monetary theorists are correct and we could all have Ferraris and no, no downside whatsoever. And you could, uh, we'll give Jason a Lamborghini and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, how um, generous of you with our taxpayer yeah, money. Yeah, you yeah, should yeah. run for office. <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, for, no you got to stop. You got my vote. <laughs> stop, stop calling it taxpayer money. This is this is brand new money. Yeah. Newly, newly minted uh, or created in a computer at the Fed. And so, yeah, so, yeah you don't have to worry about another uh, taxpayer footing the bill. No, no, this is brand new money injected into the economy and and there you have it so uh i'm yeah. sorry leon and jason i just went all over everyone <laughs> no no it's okay but i think i think at the bottom at the bottom at the end of the day there's too much in our society of rewarding bad conduct we are seeing too much of this and if we bail out the states especially these blue states which have totally mismanaged their their, their mm -hmm. local economies California, New York, Illinois, and others. If we bail them out, and there are no and there's no accountability, it's just that we are re rewarding bad conduct. We see mm -hmm. that spreading to our society, and we got to be careful about this. Really, got to. So I say no bailout whatsoever, unless something is going to change drastically. And Tim, you're right. We would destroy federalism. If we were to just bail out the states and then started twisting the arms to do to do X or do Y according to the dictates of the federal government, which 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 would be a very very bad thing, quite frankly. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's funny too. You know, they, these plans that uh, you know, like, it, couldn't help but thinking as you were talking about the government plan is for us to sit at home and stare at a wall and get paid for it. <laughs> you can only <laughs> you can only dream that up if you're a central planner. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> not, not really something that's competition driven. Also, too, I can't help but thinking as well that, you know, with the modern monetary theorists, I mean, two thousand dollars. I mean, that's just, you know, that's just being a piker. You know, why not? If, if this yeah. stuff really works, why not just give us all a check for a million dollars with that sure. Lamborghini? It's funny, you know, you can never pin these guys down to why that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah. they seem to be really generous, but when you go large, they suddenly get all nervous. <laughs> and it's so, and it is so objectionable when they try to tell us that this is really a stimulus check. When these are the people shutting down the economy and destroying our lives, yeah. and they want to tell us this is a stimulus check. Yeah, yeah. this is so yeah. objectionable. Yeah, that, that that's yeah. the craziest thing of all in all of this is that they, they, they call this stimulus while they're. I'm not allowing anything to be stimulated. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> they're handing us money, and they're not allowing us to to actually engage in the activity that they're hoping to stimulate. It. It's only from central government <laughs> could you could you get this kind of stuff. But you know, and I, I unfortunately I feel a little bit like a central planner here because we missed our uh, our goal to hit vaccines today. <laughs> <laughs> wanted to talk about that, but we'll have to get Damn, to that. Reason. One of our. <laughs> What's going on here? What's going on here? Damn! Come on now. What's going on here? <laughs> we'll have to get to that in one of our next shows because I don't want to short those topics because they're pretty important. But um, that said, I think uh, we'll we'll jump in just a little bit early today for our uh, knucklehead noise patrol. So uh, there's the sound. So. Uh, you know, on the knucklehead noise patrol, this one, uh, you might want to spend a little more time with it anyways, because, uh, you know, we had a, a case of, uh, you know, the knucklehead noise patrols where we talk about something silly that somebody has said recently. And so uh, we, we actually had a case of a of a congressman from California who I guess is uh, starring in his own version of the you know a, re a reality version of the movie the spy who loved me <laughs> so so he is uh, apparently uh, unknowingly been sleeping with a chinese spy for about the last decade or something or close to that <laughs> and uh, uh his name is eric swalwell and and not only has he been sleeping with a chinese spy but he has also been sitting on the intelligence committee for the house yes <laughs> Yes. Yes. So a Democratic congressman. And so uh, you, there, there's been some concern, obviously, that, that hey, this guy is sitting on the, an intelligence committee. Should he be pulled off? And uh, some of the Republicans have suggested that. And Nancy Pelosi, 
uh, was recently quoted as saying, I don't have any concern about Mr. Squalwell. I, I do think that it is unfortunate that Mr. McCarthy, that's the uh, Republican leadership here, uh, is trying to make an issue of this. But you know what he's trying to do. He's trying to deflect attention from the fact that he has QAnon on his delegation over there. I mean, holy crap, talk about, you know, well, look at what he did. You know? <laughs> she's got a problem. She's got a fire in her own house, but she's pointing to somebody else's house and saying yeah. they got trouble over there, too. I, <laughs> it's just, it's just insane. And by the way, irony of ironies, Swalwell has also been repeatedly uh, uh, saying that Trump is a Russian agent yes. during the last four years as well. So anyway, I'll let you guys have at this. <laughs> God. You know, Sowell, Sowell is, a really, is a really a piece of work, okay? He used to be on TV, just like I said, he used to be on TV in and out telling us how Trump is a Russian asset, he, he, there was collusion, all of these things. This man is such a hypocrite. I guess the Democrats have this disease. Hypocrisy, that is, is at the top of their list. He used to be all over TV. One time he was on, um, on, 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 on Fox News with Martha, with Martha McCollum, and he said something about Trump and being a um, uh, being a Russian asset, and even Martha, who is a damn good reporter, was so shocked by the man's statement. Like, are you serious? She, he said, he turned around and said, "What was incorrect about what I said?" The man was that arrogant, that arrogant about his statements about Donald Trump. Now we come to find out this man been sleeping with a Russian with, with a Chinese spy. Now we come to find out, and now all of a sudden we can't find him. He's nowhere to be found. All the time he was on TV, all over TV, every, nearly, almost every day, you could see him on Fox News or on CNN or one of them. You could see him. But now he wouldn't even answer questions. He's running and hiding. And this man is sitting on the Intelligence Committee. And you know, but there's a deeper problem here, really and truly. There's really a deeper problem here that we should really be careful about. This is the second situation involving a Democrat and a Chinese spy. Diane Feinstein, Senator from here in California, had a man who was a Chinese spy working for her for 20 years. And what happened? Nothing happened. They gave, the FBI gave her a, a defensive briefing. They allowed the man to retire. I think he went back to China. I don't know where he is right now. And that was the end of the matter. Now Eric Sorrell sleeping with a, with a Chinese spy. And what is going to happen with this now? Are we going to have a special prosecutor going to spend $48 million to investigate him now? Are we going to have that? Or is this just going to be one of these things we're going to just sweep under the carpet again? <laughs> well, to, to find out the answers to those questions and more exciting questions, we'll have to wait till one of our next shows. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we've reached the end of our time. Uh, but if you want to join us for um, uh, uh, join us for our next one, and you can catch some of our old shows at libertariancounterpoint.com, uh, Facebook Libertarian Counterpoint, uh, and um, we're also on public access, too, on uh, Sacramento on Mondays. So, uh, but thanks so much, and have a Merry Christmas, and we'll... Uh, uh, we'll yes. catch the next one. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.